Hello students, I'd like to welcome you to this presentation of the sculptures of Klaus Oldenburg. Um, I know when you look at his name, you want to say his name is Klaes or Klaes or something like that, but we say his name is Klaus, Klaus Oldenburg. And Klaus was Swedish. So let's look at some of his work. Okay, here you see a picture of Klaus Oldenburg, and we can see that he was born in 1929. And at the time of this uh, presentation that Sean Teacher's making, Klaus is still alive. He's like 91. And I'm sure he's still making art somewhere. But uh, his father was a diplomat, and he came to America and started as a news reporter and eventually became a sculptor. And uh, I think you're going to agree with me that his sculpture is quite different than a lot of the sculpture that you've seen. So let's take a look at some of it. Hey, what's going on here? Those are badminton birds, but they're giant. Are giants playing badminton on the lawn of the Nelson Art Gallery? Probably not. Instead, I think these are the sculptures of Klaus Oldenburg. And that's right. Klaus has made art out of giant birdies. Giant, giant badminton birdies. And... If you look at it, that one, especially the one on the right, it looks like it's just fallen on the ground and it's about to sit up like the other one is. And that's something that I want you to notice right off the bat about Klaus's work is that a lot of the time it looks like something is going on. Something's now. And uh, true to form, there's some kind of badminton game that's gigantic going on on the, uh, on the lawn here. Uh-oh, somebody dropped their apple. It looks like a giant apple core, doesn't it? Now, I guess now is the time to sort of explain to you what Klaus does. Klaus finds everyday objects. And when he does, he changes them into gigantic sculptures. You can see this apple core that he's made is about the height of that building. Imagine an apple core as tall as your school. That's a little funny, huh? Because when most people see an apple core all shriveled up on the sidewalk, they don't even look at it. They walk right by, oh, look at that garbage on the ground. That's what they think. But Klaus took a look at it and he's like, wow, this is really beautiful. I think I'm going to make it 20 feet tall. And that's what Klaus does. He changes everyday objects that many people think of as trash or at least overlook them. It's certainly not some beautiful art form. He makes them gigantic so that they cannot be ignored. I can remember when I was a boy, my father would constantly be looking for some tool, some wrench or some screwdriver or pliers or something, and he could never find the tool that he wanted in his toolbox. So inevitably, he would pick the entire toolbox up, turn it upside down, and dump all the tools out on the table. And as they were falling from the box to the table, this is what they looked like. And Klaus has captured the look of tools falling to the ground or to a table or however you imagine it. He's captured this look of these tools falling, but frozen it into a gigantic sculpture. They're just tools, a screwdriver, a wrench, and a pair of pliers. 
but they seem to be moving at the same time. And look at this. It's a giant broom and a little dustpan with paper. And you think to yourself, well, that's no big deal until look at the right side of the dustpan. <clears throat> that's a man standing there. So if you can imagine the man is maybe six feet tall, the broom and the dustpan have to be at least 30 feet tall. It's amazing, isn't it? Klaus would look at this and think it was funny because we, we kind of think about dirty stuff that we sweep up from the floor as being, you know, rather ugly and, and not fun at all to clean anything up. And so he sort of made this joke out of it and made this sort of gigantic broom sweeping up paper into this gigantic dust bin. And many of the things, that I, this is so funny, many of the things he, he does have this element of action, movement. It seems as though a thing has happened and that the action caused by that thing happening has been frozen. I know at least some of you have been bowling before and you always remember that excitement and that sound of the bowling ball hitting the pins and the pins hitting the floor. And it's very exciting to watch them sort of tumble and fall and jump into the air. And here Klaus has frozen it. And if you look at the size of those people, you see how gigantic these bowling pins are. One way he's able to capture the size, the enormity of these sculptures is by burying part of his sculpture. Now, in reality, he really didn't bury the bowling ball, but it looks buried. It looks like half of the bowling ball is underground. Some of the pins are underground. And that's how he sort of captures this, this uh, the size of these things. Here's another view of the same sculpture. It's incredible, isn't it? It looks like the bowling pins are tumbling. Maybe they're going to fall out into the street there. It'll cause a big problem, huh? Yeah, Klaus would think this was very funny. <laughs> Uh-oh. Somebody dropped a bent screw. This screw looks like it would cause a big problem if it were in the road. And look, it's sort of bent. It's called screw arch. So he's just found some piece of junk and looked at it and thought to himself, this is really beautiful. I think I'm going to make a sculpture out of this. And then he just makes it incredibly large. And... Here is a pickaxe stuck in the ground. Do you see the size of the fisherman there to the left? This thing is huge. And somebody just left it there. It's almost like as if to say, hey, I left my pickaxe out there. If you want it, you can have it. All you've got to do is pick it up. But I don't think anybody's going to be able to pick it up. It's pretty big, huh? This is called free stamp. And just like that last pickaxe that you saw, it's free. Just pick it up. All you got to do is just take it home with you. You can't, can you? Because it's huge. But it looks just like all those rubber stamps you see in offices. And there it is, just sort of laying around in the, in the yard of this uh, building. And it's gigantic. Have you ever watched someone turn on the water hose? That at the first, at the very beginning, the water hose is very flat. And especially if you have a lot of water pressure, the water hose 
fills up very quickly and it, it extends and gets big and stretches out. And that's what Klaus has captured here. You see the, the water spigot attached to the, the garden hose and it's, it's filling up all of a sudden. Something you can't see here is that actually on the other end of this thing, it's actually a little, a little fountain that uh, water actually does pour out of the end of this water hose. It doesn't gush out. It's just sort of a, a little fountain, but it's, it's kind of cute. And here is a giant clothespin. Uh, he's done this one more than once. He's got a couple of these out in the world. And they're huge. They're 60 feet tall. They're giant. And uh, a lot of people would wonder, why would you make art out of a clothespin? And Klaus just looks at this very simple machine and thinks, this thing is beautiful. I've got to make one of these. And it's going to sit in front of some castle somewhere because it's such beautiful art. And people agree with him that when he does make them gigantic, they are beautiful. So what do you think? The corner in some city someday and saw where a giant had dropped his ice cream cone. What a problem it is when you drop your ice cream cone. You love the ice cream, but there it is on the ground. You can't pick it up and eat it now because it's ruined. Oh, it's such a disappointment. Now we've got this giant ice cream cone on top of a building. So maybe you can see Klaus's sense of humor. And hopefully you understand that this sort of thing that he does, it's kind of a joke and it's kind of art and it's really, really beautiful. And I wonder what you think. I wonder if I asked you what common everyday thing could you think of that you might make, I don't know, the size of a, a diesel truck or the size of, of a school building. What everyday thing do people ignore that you would look at and say, I think this is beautiful. Let's make it 60 feet tall. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that. See you. Bye.